happy Wednesday. Let's make sure everything's getting set here. I have to say, and it's, I don't know if it's just a warning or maybe if I just say it, it won't happen. I'm not sure. But I've just spent the last 20 minutes trying to make sure that my camera setup is good and not so much my cameras themselves, but the actual arm that goes over my my work area. So fingers crossed, it's all set up now. I had this terrible sort of like shifting. <laughs> so if you see me going off the camera, uh, I hope that uh, we can, we can, you know, uh, make it through without any problems. But if you do see me going off, uh, I will try to adjust if needed. And worst case scenario, if everything just falls and crashes, then I will stop the broadcast reset it up, film the rest, uh, not live, but just film it. And then I will add it on, you know, to, to the both, both platforms. So just a word of warning, cause you never know what's going to happen. Do you? <laughs> well, anyways, hello, hello, everybody. I'm getting lots of friends joining me today from all over. There's Betsy from Ohio, uh, someone, oh, Diane from Pennsylvania, Guelph, Ontario, Central Florida, Southern Illinois, Donna from Denver, uh, Meredith is here from Camrose, Alberta, just uh, just uh, close here to Calgary, it's not too far away, so welcome, and another fellow connect there is Karen from Winnipeg, hello everybody, Sharon's joining us from the UK, glad that you could join us from across the pond, and lots more are scrolling by as I'm chatting, so hello, hello everyone, there's Sue from Oregon, thanks Sue. Always appreciate seeing your uh, your name and your 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 cheery waves uh, all the time. So that's great. Glad you could join me. Okay, so if we haven't met before, I am Noreen Smith. I am the product development creative manager at Creative Memories, and every week it is my pleasure. Uh, it's the best part of my job to be able to join you here on the Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group as well as on the Creative Memories YouTube channel. So I always mention that we are on both platforms, but there's good things about each platform. So you wanna make sure that you've joined us on both. Make sure you've subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you've liked and joined, obviously, the uh, Facebook group. We do lots of inspiration and the challenges and prizes and that kind of thing in the Facebook group. And of course, the YouTube platform is the easiest place to watch us live and to see the playlist. So if you're ever looking for something, go to the YouTube channel. You know, should be able to find it a little more easily than going through all of the different, you know, media and videos and featured and scrolling in the Facebook group. Okay, awesome. All right, lots more ladies joining us. Someone from Gainesville, Florida, which luckily did not get hit by Hurricane Idalia. So very, very concerning, obviously, and sending hopes and prayers that everybody is okay, um, you know, from Hurricane Idalia, as well as all of the other crazy things happening in our world today. This is always our happy little corner where we can get away from our problems for an hour or so. Uh, and every Wednesday we get to do it. So that's, again, like I said, the best part of my job. It is the last time we are going to be doing one of our Sizzlin' Summer Challenges. This has been such a hit. I have so enjoyed it. You guys have been thrilled by it. And it is amazing to see all of the participation and engagement. I am so excited that so many of you joined and took on the challenges. And of course, shared, posted and shared your takes on, on the challenges, because that's what it's all about, sharing inspiration, giving everybody ideas, because what I do may not work for somebody else, but what you do might work for somebody else. So we love seeing all of your takes on everything. Someone's saying, boo-hoo, I don't want it to end. I know, I know. But you know what? We're, you know, we've seen your comments. We've heard what you've said about enjoying this. Um, you know, we hope to do something like this again. Next week, we are going to go back to kind of our regular um, Fast and Fun episodes. And of course, fall is just around the corner and we're going to have lots of fall fun. So it's going to be great. But 
we might do challenges again at another point in time. So never say never. It's, you know, this, this set of challenges will be over, but never say never. We very well may do them again. Before we get on to challenge number nine, our final challenge, let's talk about challenge number eight which of course was going wild with your punches. And you guys really did. I have seen so many great ideas, some that I had never thought of in a million years. And I have to say, I pride myself on trying to have, you know, a lot of creative divergent thinking, but man, you guys had some incredible examples of what to do with your punches. And again, that guiding question of what if, that is a great thing to ask yourself when you're struggling to, you know, have some creative thoughts. What if? What if I turned it? What if I cut it? What if I changed it? What if I flipped it? What if I rotated it? What if I joined it, right? So all of those different kinds of options that you can do. Think about what could happen, all right? And you guys really had some great things. Um, so we've got some winners, but let's just review what the prize is before we... Um, before we switch over. So we had our Go Wild bundle, which was of course featuring all of the amazing What A Zoo 2 collection, including the zebra stripe border maker cartridge, which is kind of where we took our, our inspiration for the Go Wild challenge from. So lots of great examples, but our winners, congratulations to Donna Parker, and also to Karen Donisthorpe. Again, hopefully, Karen, I'm saying that right. So we're so happy that you guys participated. And Donna and Karen, watch for an email from home office, either Nicole or Sonia, and they will be setting you up with your prizes. So again, thanks so much for participating. And we loved seeing your examples. And I do just want to mention, I know that there was some glitches with Facebook. We had quite a few messages saying, help, you know, my post is still pending. I posted it before the deadline, but it, now it's after the deadline. Don't worry, we did go back and check and all of the pending posts, everything that was posted, but maybe not... Um, accepted before midnight last night. Those were all thrown into the mix before we chose the winner for today's prize or for this week's prize. So you definitely were included. Please don't worry about that. Okay. And now for our last prize, we're also going to be talking about our grand prize. So I'm going to be talking about two things that you're going to have to do at the end of today's um, at the end of today's episode. Okay. So now let's talk about today's episode, today's challenge, today's final Sizzlin' Summer 9 challenge. And some of you who have taken courses from me before will know that I really enjoy challenging myself to one to keeping things to one. And I think that one is not the most boring number or the most loneliest number. I think one can be wonderful, okay? So we are gonna make some simply wonderful uh, monochromatic layouts today. And I just wanna give you a little bit of color theory. We're gonna talk about organizing some of your monochromatic or color-based uh, embellishments. And then we're gonna to put together a really simple, uh, fast and easy layout. And I'm gonna give you a couple of tips for working with monochrome, okay? So first of all, I just this is the, the art teacher geek in me. I want you to remember that monochromatic means one. It comes from the word mono, meaning one, and chroma, meaning color. So monochromatic is one color. Now, when you think about one color, uh, you might think about, you know, um, red and pink. And even though those seem like two different colors, pink is actually a tint of red. So we've got red as the main color. I'm going to show you a color wheel in a couple minutes here. But red is the main color. And then pink actually has a lot of white added to it. So pink is red with white added to it. Burgundy or maroon, um, dark, you know, sort of red, is red with black added to it. So monochromatic is really the idea of the scale of color with just white 
or, or black added to it. So tints and shades. Now, when we think about tonal colors, like for example, our, to our totally tonals, those often have some other colors blended into them as well. So for example, there might be a blue green or a yellow orange, and that's uh, not specifically one color. It's kind of a tonal variation or a blend of colors. So we are going to try, or I'm going to try, to be as true to one color as I can. All right. So that's going to be the challenge is to create a monochromatic color and a layout. And I think I'm going to be using yellow today. We have so many options to help you with that monochromatic. So we've got the totally tonals, which I mentioned. We've also got shades of cardstock. So for example, you know, right behind me, you might have several different blues. You might have the baby blue, the blue, and the navy. And that's a perfect example of how one color, blue, can be lightened with white to make the baby blue or darkened with black to make the navy, okay? So really that idea of tints and shades, you can think of it that way. Baby blue, blue, and navy. Perfect, perfect example. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, when I show you the color wheel, but I am going to use vivid melodies because those are beautiful monochromatic based or color based uh, collections. Again, I mentioned totally tonals, I mentioned the cardstock. We go way back and you might have some of these ones in your stash as well. Who remembers Fresh Fusion or Rainbow Rush? Those were color-based types of collections as well, where there was, you know, maybe a few colors, but there was dark and light versions of them. So anything that's kind of in your rainbow color groups, you're going to be able to find some monochromatic, some light, medium, and dark examples to use in this. But I'm going to use Vivid Melodies. And those of you who have already kind of, you know, figured out that at 5 o'clock p.m. when I get started, the fast and fun deal also gets started. Some of you may have already seen that Vivid Melodies is our screaming fast and fun deal of the week. And we have another one there for you, but I'm going to talk about that in a second. So when you're working with monochromatic, sometimes you think, well, you know, there's, there's yellow in this and there's yellow in that and there's a light yellow in something else. So it may be a little bit of a different process for you. Um, and I talk a lot about organizing in the way you scrapbook or the way you think about scrapbooking. So just like I suggested asking what if, when you're thinking about what you can do with a tool, for example, I want you to think about this question when you are talking or, or when you're thinking through how you want to organize your supplies. Where would I look for this? And not like where in your space would you look for this, but would you look for it in a collection? Would you like to have it um, alphabetized? Would you like to look for something based on colors? Would you like to look for things based on themes? So it really is about how you want to categorize your and organize your products but also think about how you're going to find it. I tend to, and I think I've talked about this before, but I tend to keep my products in their collections because I think in collections. And then all my collections behind me here are actually alphabetized. So that's the way I think. And I think to myself, okay, I want to do something monochromatic. Uh, I think I want to do yellow. What collections have yellow in them? So then I think, well, I've got botanical burst yellow. I go over here, pull it out. Oh, I also have vivid melodies yellow. Go down here, pull it out. Oh, there's also totally tonals canary. So go over here, pull it out. So that's the system that works for me. But I want to show you another option because I know that many of you like to break up your collections and organize them. So I'm going to talk for just a couple of minutes before we get into monochromatic layout making. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our second deal, which is very exciting because it is the sort and stash binder 
with the fill and file sleeves. So if you haven't tried this yet as one of your organizational tools, you definitely want to think about this as I'm talking this through with you. I believe that before I have talked a little bit about using your um, sort and stash to arrange by theme. So I think I gave the example before of Christmas. And I just want to let you know that these are the power layout guides. And I've just hole punched them here and used them basically as dividers. Now, for a long time, when I finished a collection, I, you know, this is seasons, seasons greetings from 2018. So I would keep the cover and I would put all of the extra embellishments, mats, stickers, etc. Kind of fold it over and then I would tuck it all in and I actually had a little drawer that these fit in. So once my paper was done, but if I still had these kind of leftovers, I would put them away here. But now what I actually like to do is, is organize them in the binders by, um, by category. So here I've got Seasons Greetings uh, 2018. Uh, you can see that I've got a bunch of the laser borders here some scraps of paper, and then a few of the embellishments. So that's one way you could use the sort and stash uh, binder. And you'll probably have noticed already that there's a couple of different kinds of pages, and there actually is four different kinds of pages. So we have the two and a half by 12, which is perfect for borders, laser borders, uh, borders that you've already cut, sticker strips, long sticker strips, or even just, you know, kind of little uh, strips that are paper scraps. So that's the first one. Then we also have the five and a half by five and a half, which is the four squares. This is great for tucking larger pieces into. And then uh, I don't think I have them in this category here, but we also have the uh, six by 12 which are perfect for sticker sheets, slide just down in there, and then the full 12 by 12 sheets. So there's four different types of pages and they are all part of the, the deal, the screaming fast and fun deal. I also will use uh, my binders to store my templates. I've shown that before. So I like to keep the template and the, um, the insert sheet with some ideas on it inside and typically again because I'm kind of uh, think in terms of alphabets I, I usually keep them kind of alphabetical this is just a few that I've put in here but I have an entire binder just with templates and they're all arranged in alphabetical order so there we've got a few different ones sunny days and ending up with tropic time but I want to focus more on what I would call a rainbow section of my binder. And I did mention I'm going to do a quick little color wheel. Uh, you might hear people say in rainbow order. And being an art teacher for so many years, I actually think in rainbow order. So I'm going to just pull you back here for a second. You'll notice that my cardstock is in rainbow order as well. And that is the reds, the oranges, yellow, green, blues, and then ending with purples. So that Roy G. Biv, R-O-Y-G-B-I-V, that's the uh, rainbow order that you'll also often hear me talking about. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then it's indigo and violet. But on a color wheel, you see that sort of, um, that sort of organization okay and it has to do with how colors interact how colors mix and make uh, new colors so for example between yellow and green we've got yellow green so a color wheel is a great tool to have because it lets you see the relationships of color so I just wanted to pull that out because I've started to put some of my uh, specific color embellishments into my rainbow section of my binder. So here you can see I've got the soft pink um, stickers from Totally Tonal Soft Pink. I've got some of my Vivid Melodies um, um, 
embellishments. We're going to actually break open the yellow ones today and put them in the binder. And I've also got the botanical burst. And sometimes if I like to keep things together, so for example, these ones are all various Vivid Melodies. There was a promo with Vivid Melodies. There's the combo pack. So I know that those are Vivid Melodies. But if I wanted to keep something together, so for example, with Botanical Burst, we had all of these fun little individual petals as well that you could put together and make up your own flower. So I like to just keep those embellishments in their pack and then just slide them in. I still get to find them with the pink section, but you know, uh, they kind of are, are contained again. So I have my red and a couple, or sorry, my pink with a couple of reds here. Then it goes into more red. Then it goes into the yellow and orange. Then the green. Then into the blue. And I don't have any specific purple, but you can see how some of the blues start to take on that purple look. So just by interspersing some of the 5x5 five five inch fill and files and the 6x12 inch fill and files, I've got room for borders, I've got room for little packages, I've got room for my sticker sh sheets, and it's all kind of at a glance. So if I want to, you know, find something that's pink, I can just go to my pink section and say, oh yeah, without trying to figure out what other collections have pink in them? Here is a good little selection of pink uh, embellishments. So this might be something that you uh, that would fit with your uh, specific idea or process of how you know how you scrapbook. So again, just opening up this collection. Let's just sort this really quickly because I am going to use the Vivid Melodies. Um, yellow. So I can see that I've got a little bit of orange there. I've got quite a few that are brighter yellow. And there's some green here, but because it came with this collection and it matches some of the, the green in the flowers there, I think I would keep this all together. So I can just tuck those in there. Um, I, I know people struggle with words. So where do you put a word like this that comes with a collection? <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't necessarily fit with the colors. So you can choose whatever works for you. So I would probably keep this together again just because I know it was from Vivid Melodies. And you might also be wondering what these little tabs are. So because these are like little flap pockets, I like to use the same tabs that I use um, sorry, I just had to drop down there, that I used to put on my bags. So I'll add one of these little removable tabs to the sides of my bags and keep all of the papers together. And that's how I can find them in the shelf behind me. So there we go. Uh, I just like to use those little tabs to kind of keep the little flaps closed. And I just put those on. I can write... I know that I wrote somewhere as an example. Maybe I didn't. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So you can write right on them and then just use them to sort of pull up the top of the envelope and then just kind of keep it sealed. And that's great if you have lots of little bits and pieces. Okay. All right. So let's get back to just opening up the rest of these yellow embellishments and putting them in going to open the last one. These ones are gorgeous. I love these big laser cuts. Super, super fun. And that combo pack is great because you get some borders and large embellishments and then some smaller ones as well. Okay, so I probably put these right in with the yellow. Same sort of thing. This one might not fit. It might be too big. Because I think it's closer to six inches. So yeah, I think I probably have to put this one over here. Oh, that's a bit of a tight fit. I might not want to put that one in there. I may want to put that in a full size um, pocket just so that it doesn't get uh, ruined. But I can definitely put the 
put the border in here. Okay, so I think you get the idea of how you can use the sort and stash. Here's a bunch of little titles that would be good. Put these all together in here. But I think you get the idea of how to use the sort and stash uh, to divide up some of your color-based uh, embellishments and smaller items. Okay, so now as I'm doing my my yellow um, my yellow layout, I can come to this section and I kind of have yellow and orange together because that's the that's the color that I have the least of. Uh, I am seeing a question here: How many inserts are the ideal amount to put in a binder? Uh, it's a smaller ring, so when you get to the point where you can't cl close it, you know, because it does have a zip around it, when it gets to the point where you can't close it, obviously you've got too much. But you can see that there's quite a lot of room there. So I don't have a number for you, but maybe I will do a little bit of experimenting and see what the ideal number would be. If anybody else has uh, used and loves the sort and stash and fill and file, give us your suggestions as to how many uh, pages will fit in there. Okay, so we're going to come back to these because I'm going to be using some of the yellow. I obviously still have to put my green in there as well. So let's talk now. Oh, and before we leave that completely, I would love to hear from you guys as to how you think. So do you like organizing by color? Do you like organizing by theme? Do you keep your collections together? Uh, do you organize alphabetically? Give us some of your best tips for organizing because we always, even though we're not focusing on organizing, we always love to think about organizing and being more efficient. Really, that's what it's all about. When I organize and I organize in the way I scrapbook, I become more efficient with the time that I have to scrapbook, okay? All right, so yeah, love to see that and um, come back to that a little bit later. So let's get on um, to our to our actual layout today. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use butterscotch, which is the yellow base. And you can see right here that it's not a true monochromatic because it's got oranges and yellows in here. You can see in the green, for example, and the blue and pink, it's a little bit more monochromatic because it's shades of pink and red, blue and green. So the yellow is a bit of an anomaly. So I'm going to pull out the yellow papers and I'm going to try to stay away from the orange. And I did already kind of go through this because again, if, if we did, <laughs> if I didn't do that, I would be taking forever. So I want to show you what I kind of have in mind today. So I have a couple of photos of my son Grayson and I, and I love a monochromatic layout uh, to pull colors from a photos. So here we were at the Bouchard Gardens earlier this spring. You can see that there was some purple and yellow, but in this one especially, you can see it really kind of skews to the yellow. So that's why I kind of thought I would pull the yellow. Also, I noticed, of course, um, when I was looking at the embellishments that some of the yellow flowers have green. So it will pick up the green, but I'm going to try to stick mostly with yellow. Now my best tips for creating a monochromatic layout are the idea is the idea of contrast. And I want you to think about this as you're putting your layout together. Do I have a light color, a medium color, and a dark color. So do in my case, do I have a light yellow, a medium yellow, and a dark yellow? Because that will provide some contrast. If I only use colors or versions of the colors that are similar to each other, then it's not going to have a lot of difference and definition. So contrast is what we want to work with here. So I've got, um, I'm, I think I'm going to use this as my base, okay? And then you can see that this one is also still pretty light. 
and then this one's a little bit darker. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pull out a couple of the pieces that I already thought about using. And I've already cut them down again, just, just so that we're a little bit quicker in the layout department. So I have my base page. And if you like to gut your paper, that is cut out a section from the center so that you can reserve it and use it again, by all means, go ahead and do that. And we're just going to create kind of a simple box by putting a couple of pieces that I've already cut. Okay, so I've got kind of that darker one, the medium yellow, and then a, a white with yellow on it. And my sizes for this, the top little border is 11 by 2 inches, and the bottom is 11 by 9 inches. And really, that's just to create a little bit of contrast. Now, of course, if I use something with orange, that's going to bring me another color, but you can see what the idea of contrast does. Let's see if there's another yellow. There's a beautiful ombre pattern. I feel like there was another yellow. That one's a yellow with lots of green. Oh, right here. So this is another one that could, could be used. So maybe we'll actually look at this as a base page because it's a little bit deeper. It does have a little bit of orange in it kind of the nature of yellow to make it as deep as possible. But yeah, now you see that we've got a little bit more contrast. If I had used this one, it's not as much contrast. So that's the first tip is try to have a light, a medium and a dark version of your color. Okay. Don't forget that you could add in your, you know, your cardstock, for example, you could have a, you know, if you have some goldenrod uh, cardstock left in your stash. That would be a nice compliment to this. The canary works beautifully, of course, with your Totally Tonals canary. So use your, your solids to also kind of help with that contrast of light, medium, and dark. Okay, so you want to try and have at least three tints and shades of your color. Emphasize them by using your visual uh, solid, and that will really help to contrast. The last thing is, is, of course, try to choose different patterns. Now, both of these are kind of small scale. This is a nice large scale. But if I you know, chose something like this, and this is such a beautiful paper, if I chose something like this, it would create a different sort of texture or scale of pattern. Okay, but again, I'm trying to stay away from the green. Otherwise, I'd use that paper in a heartbeat because it's gorgeous. But I'm happy with these. So it's kind of a little yellow vines and then yellow suns and then the white paper with these big yellow roses. So I'm going to go with that as my base for my layout. And let me just pull the other papers aside here. And you might have noticed that I already printed my photos with um, borders. And that's an easy way to, again, provide some contrast so that your, your pictures, you don't even need to mat them. They're just ready to go and you can just pop them on just like that. So I can, I can organize these however I like. So that's going to be the basis. Let's pull my, my sort and stash fill and file. And I was hoping to use this beautiful floral border. So I was kind of thinking that I might just use it right there across the seam. And then I was, yeah, I was kind of hoping that some of these embellishments from the Vivid Melodies, I tucked them all away, now I'm going to pull them out again, would work. So these beautiful flowers are mostly yellows. I'm going to try to keep all of the yellow ones. There is one with some green. And then I'm going to come back to the, uh, the titles there in a minute. So I thought that if I had this, I could actually use some of these darker yellow flowers to not only provide some accent down here, but also to provide some details up at the top here. So I was kind of thinking I could maybe, you know, choose a few of these and just add them on top of the border because it's the same flower in this case. So there is a little bit of orange. I am straying just a bit, but I do have a yellow that's bordering on orange here as well. So it kind of still works. 
But I don't know if you noticed that in the paper with the flowers, there are some beautiful lighter yellow flowers. So what did I do? I went ahead and I fussy cut some of the flowers from the paper. And now I've got some middle yellow colored um, flowers as well. So some of these are paper. Okay, you can see the plaid design from the back. And some of these are the actual die cut, thick die cut embellishments. So as I kind of just, you know, plan and plot and play around here, I think I maybe try to tuck that up underneath there so it gives me a little bit more room. And this was one that was right on the edge of the paper. So I literally just took my little um, multi-purpose scissors and just doing something like that gives me some extra yellow that's just a slightly different color and it's going to create some really pretty contrast there. So I've got a few of those. Okay, and I could add those in. Of course, I could go ahead and fussy cut some more. And for those of you who don't know about fussy cutting, some of you will say, oh, Noreen, I'm tired of hearing about fussy cutting. But I really enjoy fussy cutting because, I think I'll, I'll still leave that one there, uh, because I can use paper as embellishments. So all I do is kind of cut around what I want. And even if there's, you know, kind of a, a spot that I didn't, um, it, you know, it's not the full flower. I can just go back in here and I could just cut it down as big or as small as I need to. So the trick for fussy cutting is to use the micro tip scissors. I hope I'm doing this cause I'm kind of holding it away from myself. Usually I have to take off my glasses and hold it quite close to my face, but really I'm holding my scissors in the same position opening and closing the blades and I'm rotating the paper with my other hand. So I'm not moving the scissors as much as, as the blades of my, or sorry, I'm not moving my scissors as much as I'm moving the paper. So I just kind of, you know, made my own little fussy cut flower there. So again, that one might, might be too big, but I just wanted to show you how you can create additional embellishments. I feel like I'd like another kind of light one there. So here's a nice one right in the middle. So I'm just going to go in and kind of preserve as many of them as I can. And you know what the great thing is, is that a paper like this, our hero papers, you get two in a pack. So of course you can sort of sacrifice one, you know, to fussy cut and create beautiful matching embellishments. I don't think I'm getting quite around the edge there, but it, this will do. Um, and, and really expand what you have. So really there was only five, five or six flowers in the uh, embellishment pack. So here I can actually create a bunch more and uh, add some more onto my layout. And that's perfect to create those custom embellishments. And oftentimes when you're working with monochromatic layouts, that's what you need. Okay, so there's another one. So now I kind of have a nice little variety of the lighter and the darker uh, embellishments. Okay, so enough about my fussy cutting fanaticism because I really, I really do love to fussy cut. I find it very relaxing and I enjoy it. Uh, let's talk about what else I can add here. So I can go back and look at my other collections. And that's the fun thing about monochromatic is that you can go and look at other collections as well and see what might work. So let's pull out the botanical bursts. And I know that there's some flowers in here that are whole. Yeah. So here we go. So I could add in another little flower there or, oh, this one's, this one I think might work a little better. So again, it's just, slightly different tints and shades, but doing something like that might add some additional interest. It's a little bit different style of flower. Okay. Or there's a nice little sort of daisy flower here too. So I can kind of mix and match because it's all yellow. It's all going to kind of blend together. And someone was asking about these funny little petals. Well, again, I could just start tucking those in 
or I could actually, you know, glue them together and make another flower. That one I think I'm going to actually put in this lighter yellow. Look at how that beautifully blends. Love it. So I've got a couple there. And again, kind of my rule is if I do it to one area, I'd like to do, you know, something similar in another area. So this kind of serves as a main cluster. I've got a little cluster anchoring this photo over here and then another one down here. And I could go back in and use some of our fun little enamel dots as well. Maybe just dot those around. So I like that. Again, it's not introducing any of the green. Okay, I'll save that for when I want to use that paper with the green and I've got some other green embellishments. Now I could do some journaling. I could add, you know, tuck in maybe one of the little journal boxes underneath here. But I think I'll probably just journal right on the page. But let's talk about a title. And in the Vivid Melodies, we had some laser cut words. So we had, You Are My Sunshine which would be nice. It's a little big for what I have. Uh, we have happy, that might work really well, but it's kind of light, it's a really pale, pale yellow. So what I might do for something like this is back it with another piece of yellow paper. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let me just double check. Enjoy the little things that had a lot of orange and loving this. Well, of course I can always use loving this. So that would probably go in there and I think we're going to use happy. It was also brilliant. I could even cut that apart and use it. But all orange uh, or sorry all yellow with maybe a little bit of a touch of orange and of course I could go into my stickers. These are the orange ones but I do have the canary somewhere. I could go in and see if there's any stickers that would work. Uh, I love all of these little small stickers at the bottom of your um, Totally Tonal stickers. They can, they can work for so, so many different layouts. Okay? All right. So I'm just going to pull this aside. And I do have a little strip of the same paper that I used for my background. Remember what I was talking about? If you like to conserve paper, you can go ahead and um, cut out some of the center of the paper. So you could definitely do that. I happen to have this from another pack that I had already opened. So I'm gonna use that paper to just back the back, <laughs> that's why it's called backing, of the word happy. So I'm just gonna stick it on like that. And again, I'm just gonna cut around Microtip scissors are awesome for this kind of stuff. But as I start to cut around, now that um, kind of pale yellow or pale creamy color uh, paper, or sorry, uh, laser cut embellishment title, uh, because of the paper, now it's gonna start to stand out. So you can see that that's gonna work much, much better. I could also do it with a solid um, cardstock. That would work well too. I'm sorry if I'm going off camera here while I'm trying to cut away the excess. Anytime I do this, I try to kind of angle in behind the laser or the die cut that I'm kind of backing, but I may not be as precise right now as I would be if I was not on camera. So I might have a couple of little bits and little areas that I might have to trim away afterwards. But I think you get the idea that you can use your supplies to really customize and create whatever you need to, even if you're just working with that one color. Okay, so now that's going to be in the yellow family. I'll probably just arrange it like that. Let's get a couple of foam squares. And again, now I can actually back it with foam squares because I have some solid paper on the back of the, of the word. So that's like a bonus. I'll just put a couple on here to hold it up so you get the idea. Okay. So now even my title 
is monochromatic. Now, again, if I had it slightly darker, maybe it would even look better if it was on the lighter background or slightly darker yellow. But I'm happy with that, <laughs> no pun intended, because I've got a whole bunch of different colors, different tints and shades of the yellow working beautifully together. And as I said, I think I would really enjoy just adding a few of those nice little yellow enamels from Botanical Burst. So Botanical Burst, I think there's some, uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head which uh, colors are still available, but there might be some of those available. And of course, you can, um, you can also grab the Vivid Melodies. So the Vivid Melodies, individual components, as well as the Vivid Melodies um, bundle is available. And I might just start putting a couple of extra little dots up here just to carry that yellow through. And same with the Sort and Stash. Now, if you're worried about Sort and Stash in terms of, oh my gosh, is Sort and Stash going away? Are you getting rid of it? Is that why you're offering it on such a screaming deal? No. We really just wanted, again, this was uh, kind of felt like a good challenge for us to allow you to try the Sort and Stash at a great discounted price. So what we've done is we've just discounted a certain number. And basically when that number sells through, you will still see Sort and Stash and Fill and File on the website, but the price will go back to regular price, okay? So definitely if you are interested in starting to organize your products, whether they're color-based, seasonal, thematic, whatever your sort of method of organization is, if you're ready to try the Sort and Stash, I want you to go right after we finish today so that you can take advantage of the Screamin' deal, okay? Vivid Melodies will be on until it either sells out or um, until Friday at noon, okay? But I think you'll find, uh, again, depending on your method of organization, having things grouped by color might really allow you to bring different collections together and create really pretty uh, monochromatic layouts. I really like the way that, that one's come together and it just kind of pulls that yellow from the photos but it still really allows the photos themselves to stand out. So I will be going ahead and basically adhering what you see here and that will be my monochromatic layout with the light, the medium, and the dark yellow. So yellow is not a color that I use very often, just like pink isn't a color that I use very often. So it was fun to kind of challenge myself to create something with that yellow. So, you know, we've covered a lot of different things together. I've given you a little, you know, color theory refresher. We've talked about some organizational strategies, but really the main challenge here, and I, I hope you take lots of you know, uh, tips and hints away, but really the challenge here for our final Sizzlin' Summer Challenge is to create that monochromatic layout, okay? One color. So if you can, really try and stay within the light, medium, and dark of one color. Like I was trying not to add orange, for example, or the green that was in the embellishment. See, see if you can. Just challenge yourself and see what you can do. So a light, a medium, and a dark version of the color. You'll have a beautiful monochromatic look. Also, monochromatic can be black, gray, and white, right? It's, again, just shades of gray, basically, all right? So whatever color you're drawn to, think about that and see what you can do for a monochromatic layout. Now, I'm just looking at my little list of all my little reminders here. So, as I said, this is our final challenge. So, Sizzlin' Summer 9. And you have one week. You have until next Tuesday. So, even though we're going into September, you have until 11.59 p.m. Central Time. Till next Tuesday, September 5th. Okay? So, that's for Sizzlin' Summer number 9, your monochromatic layout. But because this is our final uh, challenge, we're also going to be looking for your tracking sheets. We've been talking about these all summer. 
How many of you have been coloring along? If you haven't, now is the time to get your tracking sheet and make sure that you've completed all of your challenges and all of your um, little images will be colored in. Okay, so I'm going to have to color in my last image here as soon as I finish adhering my layout together. I've got all the rest of mine colored in. And then when I'm finished all my challenges and finished coloring in my images, you'll see, and it's right on here just in case, you know, you forget, but it's right on there. Sizzlin' Summer Grand Prize is the hashtag that you're going to use. You're going to snap a quick photo of your coloring tracking sheet and you're going to post it in the Creative Memories Facebook uh, Virtual Crop Facebook group. And that will be your entry for the grand prize drawing. And do you remember what the grand prize is? It is a shopping spree. So, of course, you've used up so many of your products over the summer doing all of the fun challenges. You need some more, right? So I hope when you, uh, whoever wins the, the $200 um, prize, and I think obviously that's going to be $200 in US dollars, right? I'm Canadian, so that's like a gajillion dollars. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll confirm that amount uh, that it's in US dollars. Um, and we will choose one from all of the entries of Sizzlin' Summer Grand Prize. And yes, you have to have all nine done, all nine colored in order to be eligible, okay? So that is due the same time as Sizzlin' Summer number nine, posted in the Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group by Tuesday, September 5th, 11.59 p.m. Central Time. And then next Wednesday, First of all, we'll be going back to kind of our regular format where we're looking at some of the more recent products that have been um, purchased, but I'll be continuing to give you ideas. So even though there may not be a challenge, I hope that you'll continue to join me for lots of tips and tricks and ideas and inspiration using the products that are coming out. And of course, it's fall, favorite season of many people. I'm looking forward to diving in and playing with all the beautiful new fall products. And there's so many of them. It's going to be just so much fun. So we will be uh, going back to that kind of format uh, next week. I also know many of you are going to be asking whether we're continuing with fast and fun deals and not officially, but you never know what's going to happen. So you always want to join me during fast and fun episodes every Wednesday, 11, not 11.59, 5 p.m. CT. And you never know what we're going to do. You don't know what our, you know, our topic is and we don't know if there's, you know, a fast and fun deal. You just have to join and see what's going on. Okay. And I know many of you do it. I know many of you have uh, it on your calendar and you are here like clockwork each and every Wednesday with me. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So last week, get your challenges done. Have fun with monochromatic uh, layouts. Think about some of your storage and organization as you move into the fall. I know that for many of us, uh, you know, teachers, for example, going back to school, parents with kids that are getting back into all of the activities, our time seems to be much more limited in the fall as that routine gets started. So make the most of your time that you have for scrapbooking by thinking about how you get organized. And remember what the question is, where would I look for it? Where would I think to go to find something that I want to, to scrapbook with? And once you have the answers to that question, you're going to be able to get your supplies out really quickly and use your time efficiently. So that's always feels like uh, a fresh beginning for the fall to get organized and get into that routine. Okay, so enjoy. If you're in North America, we've got the Labor Day weekend coming up here. Enjoy that little bit last hurrah of summer before all of the craziness of fall and, and the good things that, that happen in the fall. Uh, enjoy that last little bit of time off before fall starts and I will see you next Wednesday as we start back into our regular episodes of Fast and Fun. All right, I'm just scanning, just making sure I've talked about everything. If you've got questions, put them in the comments there and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, have a great week. See you next week.
for the big grand prize, challenge number nine prize, and fall fun. All right. Thanks for spending your time with me today. Love you all. Bye for now.